Hello, hello, hello. This is L Army. Welcome to Hippie in the City. I'm joined today by Derek Alexander, one of my very close friends. He is an incredible hip hop artist, rapper, producer, upcoming actor. He's got over 6,000 subscribers on YouTube. His Dave E style beats have half a million views and counting. He's got a new album coming out called This Is The Thanks I Get. He's from Jersey. He's insightful. He tells it like it is. Please love Derek Alexander. Hippie in the City Organic. Yes. Hippie in the City. That is fire. That's a fire title. Well, that's I had to I come up it. with I had to keep my hippie Cali mentality yeah. in the city, you know. In the city. And that's the perfect way to blend it like hippie in the city. Yeah, cuz it's like I don't want to give up my sundresses yeah, and my tea and fire. my meditation and yeah. my all nah. this stuff. Nope. Nope. Hippie in the city. Yeah, I heard it first. MVP. She here. Ellen. I call her Els. Nobody else can call her. I love that you call me Els. I <laughs> truly do. It is like, you call me that from day one. Yes. And I was like. <gasps> he gave me a nickname. I love nicknames. <laughs> I love nicknames. Because calling you Ellen all day is like... It's also like... Ellen. I'm definitely more about Hi, else. Ellen. It's like, no, what's up, else? And you don't... You have a nickname personality. Yeah. Like, you yeah. don't have, like, the formal... No. 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 Let me start you... off by saying I miss you. You are the greatest of all time. I'm saying this on camera. On and off the podcast, she's the greatest of all time. Now we can start. Oh, thank you. Thank Glad you for you... having me. You're welcome. I'm so excited you're my first guest because the birth of this. I'm the first? Yeah. <gasps> I feel honored. And you're, I mean, the birth of this podcast came about while we were working at Rituals and yes. like spitballing and being yes. like, how do we Made move on up? Yes. Get up out of here. I know. And it kind of happened organically because I was literally walking home one day and met Josh on the sidewalk. Oh, wow. And like he was, just standing outside? Yeah, or? he was here outside of the Oh wow. The studio and he was just like I don't know what I was doing. You just being crazy. And mm. then we started chatting. He was like, Yeah, we have a yoga studio, podcast studio. I was like, Oh my god, I'm starting a podcast. That's fire. Yeah. Everything fell right into place. I know. Okay, so the I wanted to tell you a little bit what's in my picture frame here oh, is um why I called it hippie in the city is that hippie is a genderless word. So a girl's a hippie, a guy's a hippie. It gotcha. doesn't matter who like you that. are. doesn't matter your skin color. doesn't matter your age. Gotcha. Also, the root word hip just comes from being like doing anything hip, being cool, counterculture, yes. anything pushing the boundaries of like what's normal, society, yes. stuff like that. So it's we're redefining the term hippie. It's not just like old like white that. people at... Woodstock with, with the long hair, the beard, yeah, <laughs> and like growing their own food and like not wearing shoes. It's like the new thing is all about altruism and about just like having a good conscious mindset. Because I also think like when you and I met, like we met at work, yes, and we instantly clicked. clicked. It was like not even a week, yeah. And like we come from like very different places yes. and we are interested in very different things. Yes. But it's I was like, like, you're from Kentucky? How? <laughs> are there people that live there? <laughs> oh my God. People that don't wear shoes. Right. You like, I keep you're it. from Jersey? I know. I know. And it's like, there's something bigger than all of these labels we all put on ourselves. Yes. Yes. And so that's why I'm doing calling it hippie because when I was in California, everybody sort of talked more about this kind of stuff where it's just like mm -hmm. on a soul level. Yeah. And I find since I've come to New York, people are much more focused Soulless. on like, yeah. <laughs> they, what is that thing no that's stamped soul. all over the it's city like, that says too many humans, not enough souls. Yes. So we're going to try to bring some soul. Yes. Yes. That is the and purpose. And we need it because like, especially working and living in the city and living so close to the city, it's like your day is so much planned that you don't even plan to have a good time or you don't know how to deal with meeting new people sometimes. Like, if somebody's new to the city, they don't even know how fast the city is, so they just get 
lost and that yeah. builds anxiety and stuff. So yeah, it's I totally, totally true. understand it. I like that though. That hippie vibe. I like that a lot. Yeah, I like hip hop, hippie. It's all the same. It brings it all together. Yeah, it's not like it's I mean anything that's hip, no matter your brand of hip, mm-hmm. means. You're doing something up to date, cool. Whoever you are, yeah, yeah, pushing the envelope. So that's that's our that's our go. cornerstone. Tell me where you're from. I want to know okay. a little bit more about Jersey. I know mm-hmm. we've talked about it. Yes. Um. Um. Uh, I was born and raised. Well, technically, I was born in Hoboken, New Jersey. Okay. Um. But I was born and raised in Jersey City, my entire life. Um. One thing about Jersey City, it's very urban, especially where I'm from. It's like, like all the movies you see, like a New Jack City and stuff like that. It's kind of like that, but it's still soulful at the same time. Yeah. So it really builds character. Mm-hmm. And someone like me, I've always had family everywhere, like Rahway, New Jersey. New Jersey's big. Yeah. So you have your areas in New Jersey where it's like country mm-hmm. Jersey mm-hmm. and city Jersey. So. I've been all over, so I kind of had the best of both worlds growing up. Mm-hmm. Like, I had an aunt that lived in um, Rahway, New Jersey, so I would be over there seeing stuff like that. It's more suburban. Yeah. And then I come home, and it's, like, all urban. So yeah. it was kind of like the best of both worlds. That's why it was so easy for me to um, adjust when I got to New York because I was like, New York's so big. How do you feel like it's – do you feel like – being from like right on the cusp of the city is like yes. weird. Is there like a a, a battle? Is there like a dynamic? It is, is it, a battle. Yeah. It's it's crazy because we're so close, but we're so different. It's scary and like Jersey City is literally like five to ten minutes away. Yeah, that's on the train. So, it's wild. Literally, like, because even Brooklyn, five to ten minutes in Brooklyn is totally different. Exactly, and like. There's parts of New York where people, it'll take them longer to get to Manhattan before me. And it's like, it's crazy how close we are. Wait, what do you mean? Like, let's say you live in the Bronx yeah. or a certain part of oh, Queens Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll take to, you mm. almost an hour and a half to get to Manhattan. Yes, yes, And it'll yes. take me 10 minutes, but I'm from Jersey City. When people hear Jersey, they're like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's a whole, so yeah, whole different vibe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was easy to adjust. Um... I don't know. I love the fast life. I love the city. I love the people. Um, shut up, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, don't talk to me like yeah, that, right? Derek. <laughs> oh, my God. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Siri, shut up. I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. This is you absolutely can't make this amazing. Up. I thought I t- oh my god, I got That is up. literally so. She's funny. my wife. She's very jealous. No, but, um, <laughs> this is like the. Did you see the movie Her? Uh, no, I didn't see it. With Joaquin Phoenix. When did that come out? Like eight years ago, maybe. I got school me. Give me a list. Of it's the literally about how you're da- you can date. Um, Your phone. Well, it's like another device, but yeah, you date oh, okay. an AI that like. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm having a conversation in series, like that wasn't a nice word. <laughs> I'm like, I got just. It's slam actually my phone your mom just listening in. She's like, Derek, right? I always think that people are listening to us like twenty four seven anyway. So they are. But yeah, coming from Jersey, it was like um, it was really good. Like I grew up rough. I'm not gonna lie, I grew up around like rough circumstances. Uh, my father lived in Georgia. He always made that phone call, but it was tough not having a father at home. Yeah. But my mom raised me to be a soldier. Like, she was sergeant, friend. What's your mom's name? Felicia. Tell me more about Felicia. Oh, man. What's there not to say about my mom? She's, she's like, she gives it to you straight up. Mm-hmm. So there's no filter. She'll, oh, one thing she always did, she always gave me love with each lesson. Yeah. So it's not like she just it like, wasn't like tough love. tore it was, me up and then it, that was it. Yeah. No, it was like, I did this because you need to understand that if I let you slide with this, when you get to bigger situations, it'll be worse. Like, yeah. So that was always a um, great foundation for me. And I, I grew up, I'm older now and I'm like, wow. I see what she was talking about. Like, yeah, I mean, it's I not easy to raise, be a single mom, yeah. and like 
work and raise a really good son or daughter with like a foundation because sometimes you're just trying to literally survive from minute to minute so to for her to like give you that love and also really teach you big lessons is like says so much about her Mm, take care of another human being i know i'm about ready to try it i'm I'm not pregnant y'all but (laughs) it's it's, time is ticking here yikes Baby shower. I just figured out. Just how let to me t- know if y'all having it in Italy or not, so I can save my money. <laughs> oh my gosh, Derek, who do you think we are? How growing up with a single mom made you really attuned to your emotions attuned to like feminism and your view on women because you do have a really beautiful view on women i've seen it we haven't specifically talked about it concretely but you're very emotional not in a sensitive way but just in like a very honest way yeah and a very strong way and i think men in today's world and in our society need to develop that more yeah. because I think that's where like women's lib is great. I am a huge feminist. We all need to be empowered mm-hmm. and move forward. But I think the n- next step of it is to help men redefine their role of yes. masculinity yes. because the old role doesn't fit with our new role. Yeah. It's a but little we're harsh. fighting it. Yeah. We're, we're like the, all the women are like, fighting against this, you know, quote unquote tos- toxic masculinity. It's but clashing. now it's time to like just yeah. say hey. Enough is enough. Well, how can I help you redefine yeah. your masculinity because no one's saying look, after people stopped burning their bras and went back to shaving their legs, <laughs> like fem like feminism took a different yeah. meaning. As the sexes and there's a full spectrum, so it's not just two. Mm-hmm anymore and i love that and i love the way that people are communicating about it more and i know we see it a lot in new york city where in other parts of the country other parts of the world it's definitely not as normal to talk about it's not even acceptable to talk about it so we're lucky publicized yeah and it's it's like lucky that we live here where we can just like let's just talk about it before we get all sideways because the only way to get to understanding is to talk about stuff yes and eat like you said being okay to agree to disagree without being like bent out of shape is extremely important yes and and it's healthy yeah it is it's healthy and, and growing with my mom you literally with it just being me and her i watched her grow up too Mm-hmm. So like she, oh, yeah. she had me when she was thirty three years old. So she was much older than a lot of my friends' mm. moms or parents. But at the same time, she's still growing as a woman, mm-hmm. and she would always teach me, you know, treat women like this, do this with people in general, like you know, just teaching me down the road, giving me little things to look out for, like if if a woman does this, you leave, yeah. <laughs> like certain things to look out for. So I, I kind of. Even though it was like, um, I, I looked at it like a setback with it just being me and my mom, I also feel like I got a step ahead of a lot of people as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got, process. I mean, you got like some, uh, you know, treasured insight into the exactly. female psyche, which yes. a lot of times when like dads take the, the sons and teach them more things and the mom take the daughters and then you don't get that you know like one-on-one focus yes. stuff and that's where I think like I've always been like I know I'm gonna be a good boy mom because I'm like okay you could be real let's be them. real yeah yep. and like let's not do this but I'm also like you gotta talk about how you feel and you gotta yes or get that's it out and what however you get it out that's whether you're like working important. out doing this because I think that's the next step towards our evolution as souls yes you know on a journey is to realize that like our gender and our role in society does not define us. Exactly. And if we can move past that, we can do bigger things in yeah. the world. That's such a small part of who we are. 
as people. Yeah. Because you could be a woman or a man. If you're a piece of shit, you're going to be a piece of shit. <laughs> like, there's no... Excellent. Excellent point. Like... Yeah. Yeah. I love the energy of the city. You know me. I'm like a ball of energy. I'm like crazy. Be bopping around. But sometimes double that, like the city and me, clashes. And I get like mad anxiety or I just... Yeah. I'm working at things that feel like I'm doing more, Mm -hmm. but really I'm just keeping myself busy. Yeah. Do you know? I fall into that too. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Where I'm just like, I'm crazy. I'm doing this. I'm doing And I'm like, wait. What is it leading to? It's not leading. Yeah, exactly. What is it leading to? And that's why I was like, you know, I don't want to lose that Cali mindset of like slowing down, thinking about things like not trying to do it in three months like mm-hmm. okay i'm gonna try to do it in a year yeah in two years yeah like let's do it you know little by little and that's part of why i started this podcast just so that like we all can talk about that a little bit more mm-hmm. and you know create kind of like a cool community of people that are really hustling and yes. really trying to put our art out there but we're not gonna try to do it tomorrow yeah. You know, it's like, wait a minute. If I want to do this, if this is what I love, if this is my passion, mm-hmm. then I want to do it forever. And that's the same thing. It's funny you said that because that's the same thing with me and music um, because, you know, I produce as well as write. So sometimes when I'm working on a project, I'm like, all right, I'll look at my timeline. I'm like, I haven't put a project out since then, then, then. But then I'm like, I don't want to rush because it doesn't mm-hmm. feel genuine. And once the art gets touched, it's like, why even do it? Yeah. You're not going to like it. The people are going to know when it's rushed. Mm, like They what, do. Feel it in two seconds. You can't fool the fans. Like, they automatically know. So I'm learning to just, like, understand the process, love the process, and um, also work on myself because I kind of lose myself sometimes being so caught up in mm-hmm. it trying to produce for this person, that person. I'm just, like, moving too fast sometimes to where, like you said, when you crash, it's like... Oh, it's like, good night. It's over. Yeah, and it's like all these, you know, the the thing I'm realizing in, you know, as I'm becoming a wife and I'm thinking about becoming a mother and I still have all these other things I want to keep dear to my heart, mm-hmm. that I'm like, you know... I can't crash like I used to crash. Yeah. Like I've got too many responsibilities, not only to other people, but to myself. So I'm like, I've got to be able to sort of juggle this a little better. And that definitely requires a longer timeline. Yes. It definitely requires like chilling out, you know, and also something Scott has really gotten me thinking about. And he is a fantastic entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Like, so it thinks about the big picture, which is really good because I get really bogged down in the details. And, and like, that, yeah, that's good for a support system, too. Yeah. Me. Well, and to do it for each other because exactly. we all can do both. Mm-hmm. Look at the big picture, or get bogged down. And the one thing that is really helpful with him is he's like, you're creating assets. So, like, mm. if you create a track just because you don't do anything with it tomorrow or sell it yes. or write lyrics yes. to it or anything else, doesn't mean it it wasn't worth it. Yes. And I get really into that. I'm like, I've had this beautiful mod- modeling career for, like, 10 years. Mm-hmm. And somehow it just feels like one-offs. You know? Like, oh, I booked that gig. I made some money. Oh, I booked that gig. I made some money. Oh, I booked that gig. I made some money. And I'm, like, having a hard time seeing the bigger picture of it as, like, a career that has started, had a great run, and it's coming to an end as I get older and I'm going to move forward into other things. Mm -hmm. And Scott is getting me to learn, like, those are assets. They didn't go anywhere. You literally just played a high school student. (laughs) Like, you're going to look young forever. Oh, my gosh. Forever young. Whatever the career span is of, like actresses or actors you have like 10 more years on top oh my god that. i'm like, like a cat the cat of acting <laughs> you got like 20 lives yeah 20 li- okay all right so i'll take you can't your advice out. no i know but we all do right yeah all of us i mean and it's like i think that pressure we were talking about earlier with like social media and you see people you see people like 
Billie Eilish or anyone yes. else who Janelle Monet, like even Lady Gaga, who like came up in the industry, like almost in the blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what am I doing wrong? Because yeah. I feel I'm busting my ass. Yes. And it really is like your time is your time. Yeah. Like this is where you got to trust in God, yes. trust in the universe, Buddha, yes. Allah, whatever the higher power is. Yes. Or in yourself, trust in yourself that like it's going to happen. Yeah. And I have I have to take my own advice on that too because I can feel like I'm working so hard like we just talked about. Mhm. And that makes me somehow feel better. But it's ultimately like, a picture, like you said. Yeah. Well, and what it's like relief? like you said, it's like taking time away from working on yourself, which really if you work on yourself, invest in yourself, you're prepared for all situations. Exactly. So it's but it's it's a date that's a daily practice though. Sometimes I think oh, when we talk about it. Tell me about it. Yeah, and people we think that if we talk about it, that then we're like, Oh, I'm there. Like and sometimes I get in a mood where I think it just because my laptop is open, it means I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the hell am I doing? And really, I you're just, just like hurting your eyes with the blue yeah, light? Yeah, literally. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing nothing. Like, just close the laptop and work on it tomorrow. Like, that's one thing. If I feel like I'm forcing something or it doesn't feel good, I'm but cut it off. That's good. Cut it right that's off. That's excellent. You got to chill and you got to let it find it you. Worse. It's funny because last night, I found this beat that I was working on. I probably had it for like a year or two. And mm. with the new programs I have, I was able to fix it up and clean it up and change it into something different. I'm like, see, this is why they say you don't delete like yeah. things you don't use because you never know. There's so many stories where um, artists have had songs for like five or six years and on that seventh or sixth year, it just number one, number one. Yeah. So it's like you can't ever give up. No, Ever. never. And that's why where it's good to think about the value. Maybe it's not monetarily, like maybe all that mm-hmm. stuff's not paying your bills yet, but it doesn't mean to stop doing it yes. because it's assets, it's value. And even if it's just value because it makes you feel good, yes. like whatever the value is, like you place it on that item and that thing and it's making you better at the end exactly. of the day, you know? I'll have many questions, but when you are producing a, a track or mm-hmm. making the track, mm-hmm. do you have stuff you're doing for yourself? Do you have stuff that you are planning on selling for other people? Oh, yeah. I always plan on keeping the good stuff for myself first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then give people the cross. No, but I got out of that because you could lose out on a lot of work and a lot of opportunities. I feel like if... If something is good, it's going to be meant for you anyway. Mm-hmm. But if it's not, like, don't stop your blessings by stopping somebody else's blessing. Yeah. Like, even though you feel like, oh, I would be good at this, if it would get you further to give it to somebody else, it's just mental math. Like, yeah. Wow. I, would, I got in a mentality of, oh, I don't want to give my work away for free and stuff. In 2019, that's insane. Yeah. Everything is free. Everything is easily accessible. Like, you could go on YouTube and get a degree. Like, yeah. So, why wouldn't you? And I literally, I started putting my beats on YouTube mm. and I literally gained a thousand subscribers. Amazing. In like three to four months. Like, well, and that's the thing is, it is changing. It's like, insane. What is valuable like if you have subscribers if you have an audience you have fans then other people whether it's branding advertising other artists people will see your stuff it's like social clout you know what i mean it's like having that is really valuable these days like and then it eventually will lead to something and that's all the entrepreneurial spirit is is patching together all of this, you know, making ends meet, yeah, but still putting stuff out there like for the bigger picture. And sometimes the connections are more valuable than a little bit of money you could get at that. Totally. Moment. So, like for instance, I have this beat on my page. It has like over a hundred and thousand views on it right now. Like insane. It literally Sick. came out of nowhere else, and somebody offered to buy it off of me for like three hundred bucks. 
but they wanted the exclusive rights to it. And I'm like... For $300? Yeah, this is bringing, like, attention to my page. Yeah. So, you know what? You keep that money. Yes. And I'll just keep... Smart. Because if I would have settled for that $300, it's like you just cut the life on your own page for yeah. money you're going to spend well, especially tomorrow. Especially if that's your, like, lifeline to getting more yes. people. Like, definitely yes. these days. That's it, way like, more valuable. Keep your money. Yeah. That's fine. Big picture, baby. Yes, big, big picture. Big picture. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. Do you also feel, I do this quite a lot, and I feel we are similar. Mm-hmm. If you think, if do you feel you're wearing too many hats sometimes? Oh, my God. When you're producing and creating All stuff? All the time. Yeah. Like, it really, sometimes it shatters my spirit when I'm home because I'm like, God, I got to be my manager. I got to be the producer. I got to be the writer. I got to be the artist. I got to be the promoter. Mm -hmm. I got, like, you're spreading yourself out too much. And it's like, damn. Yeah. That's the one thing that um, I have an issue with. Like, just getting people. Because, of course, people are going to believe in your dream. But unless you have a team to where it's like, I am Ellen's hairstylist. I am her promoter. I am mm-hmm. in charge of her Instagram. I am in charge of making sure people get here for the podcast. I am, yeah. you know, it's kind of hard to be good at what you're good at yeah. and good at doing the other things. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. people always say, oh, fine people. It's like, all right, let me put an ad up on Craigslist. I know, but it is, <laughs> it, it is. I mean, you do have to put people in those things. Yeah. And I... I have this, like a lot of people I know have this, where they're like, you know what? I just got to go. Yeah. I just got to go. I'm going to do it myself, do it myself. Yes. But there's so much more power in people helping you. Yes. And doing it together and yes. creating a community. Because that also, like, I have it here on my little thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the more you share something, the more you get it. Yes. And it's like if you are working with people, it, like, also inspires creativity, like all this other stuff. And at the end of the day, like I found this with managers and agents, having somebody else Um, talk about you besides you is... Greatest feeling. But it's also, it's like they can do your stuff justice better than you can just because it's so hard to not sound... Arrogant. Yeah, glory. arrogant, conceited. It totally. <laughs> yes. When you're just like being honest and like saying, this is what I've done. I would like to work with you. You know, that's an excellent thing to do to put yourself out there, to be confident in your own abilities. Like, that's so wonderful. Yes. But to have a cheerleader or somebody oh. who is just like doing that work, it's like peace of mind. I'm like, so take much. my 10%. Yes. I just thank you. Just I can't do I it anymore. Keep those brain cells. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. I'm like, I used to, I used to do everything myself. I mean, literally everything myself, because I was just like new. You yeah. know, I was new. I was young. I was like submitting myself for castings. I would have my friend take my headshots for me, like, but I would set yeah, the shot up and I would do this. I mean, no games. Because I, I was thinking any money that I made I needed to keep for myself. I mean, I moved to LA with like a thousand dollars in my pocket. Which hey the, the goal. Still I would I'd I mean thousand dollars in my pocket. I was like sick. How did you eat? <laughs> well, I mean I was lucky enough to find a job pretty quickly oh, okay. um, nice. for modeling and I was actually a job that I uh, worked at for like seven years. Oh, which okay. was great. I mean for modeling it's like I went then, to school for the arts, but I act in classes wasn't good at all. I feel like you would like, be such a good actor, I, though. I, I I know I would. It was just like, in high school, dance was the thing. Oh, yeah. It wasn't really acting. You did dance? Yeah, I was in dance. I was what in dance. What kind of dance? All types. Jazz, modern, ballet, hip-hop. You did ballet? Yeah. As a kid, yep. Okay. I know my positions. First position, second position. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. All right. So I did that. My mom, she would always have me in like some type of yeah. activity or summer camp. Making you well rounded. So 
I went to a dance summer camp and oh my god, they worked us. Yeah. Hudson Repertory, I never forget it. They that's where I really met some of my closest friends to this day. Amazing. When I was like when I was like 6 or 7, we just became friends and but yeah. Um and it was crazy because being in the hood, you know, you're like, I ain't wearing no damn leotard. Like, <laughs> so I just throw the sweats on. <laughs> but but we, you still we, did it. They was like, we are not playing. Take those shoes off right now. Barefoot, everything. Like, I've been through it all. But that is so interesting because it, it still shows. Too. Yeah, but you still did it. Like, yeah. that's what I love is when people are, like, not letting – anybody else or their circumstances get in the way of their destiny. Yes. And it's like, maybe dance isn't your destiny. Maybe ballet yeah. is not your destiny. <laughs> Hell no. But you're like, you know what? Like, I'm going to be bigger than... Where I am. Yeah, what, where mm-hmm. I come from and what I do. And that's always what's interested me about you and about myself. Even sometimes when I look at it, I'm like, dang. Like, yeah. I just did that. Like, And that's where I have to think, like, there's some... Something bigger, bigger. Much bigger than us. Because otherwise you would just be like, yeah, this leotard is stupid because it's a leotard. Exactly. Like, you know, and you wouldn't do it. But there's something that draws you to stuff that's yes. so deep that we can't even I like, feel like no matter it. where we are, there's always going to be that light over us. Yeah. That just draws us to the right things and the right people. Like, even if we worked at Burger King, we'd be the best in Burger King. Like, yeah. I feel like anywhere we are, it's just like that light shines and people notice it. We may not sometimes. Mm-hmm. And like you said, like when you um, had different modeling gigs, you're like, oh, that was just this, this, that. But people see bigger than what we see mm-hmm. at the moment. Mm-hmm. It may be things that God gives us that we think are just normal, but we have to sit back sometimes and appreciate. Like, yo, there's people that can't do this even if they tried Mm -hmm. and it comes so easy to us so we're like spoiled brats like sure i want to be on tv today and it's like yeah we gotta understand that we're great at what we do but i love the fact that we have that drive to always want to be what's the next that's true i'm not complacent i'm not happy i'm i like both ends it's just yeah i do too yeah i do too that's the thing i have to remember though is like because I get in this trap, and I think a lot of us do in New York City. It's like, if we're not moving 100 miles an hour, yes. then <laughs> slow we're going to lose it. Like, yes. we're going to lose that drive. We're going to lose it. Like, And where I'm always like, oh, my gosh, I have an inspiring thought. If I don't do it right now, it's going to disappear. And mm-hmm. I'm starting to realize that's not true. Like you said, it's like it's a God-given gift yes. that I'm able to have inspiration all the time like attuned to these sort of like ideas in the universe. And also I'm like a spazzy, crazy, energetic yes, person. Me too. So I don't have to worry about that going anywhere. And so I've learned a little bit to like write things down if I have inspiration and be like, I'll come back to you. Mm-hmm. You know, as yes. opposed to like being an insane person and just like switching gears because I think that's where – I found is I run myself rampant is when I switch gears. It's like we were talking about wearing too many hats. Yes. It's like if you can produce stuff really, really well. Yes. Like do that for a minute and then maybe the next day mm-hmm. go right or do stuff. And I'm, maybe that's your process already. Yeah, but I have, to, I have to really be like diligent about that because yeah. very quickly – I can be like wearing five different hats at once and not mm-hmm. realizing that I'm like doing everyone and myself a disservice yes. by giving 20% to everyone. To everything, yep. Yeah. Instead of like, let me give 110 to this one thing yes. for a minute. Yes. Yeah. As long as you can articulate where you're coming from, your mm-hmm. process for things, how it be thoughtful, be, yes. you know, paying attention. Yes. Those are some really, really foundational things yes. that are going to get you far no matter what. And you're very um, extroverted and good with conversation and good at talking to people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something we met 
in a sales job. Yes. And that's I funny. think that's where we're both good at sales. Yes. And that's that is arguably the most important That's the hardest thing ever. You got to wear oh. a smile. Mm. Like <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. Oh my God! How many times, like, would a customer leave? We'd just be like, oh. yeah, <laughs> like, just because your face is exhausted <laughs> and it looks like you're like. I think that's where retail people get a bad rap. They're like, oh, did you just see her face? It's like, oh my gosh, yes. it's just because I was like relaxing. I'm, human. I'm sorry. I gotta go back to resting bitch face in between just because my like, face hurts. Oh Not my nothing God, personal. I feel like I'm wearing a mask. It's like pins are holding my face up. Yeah. I know. It's bad. It's know. And it's not healthy. I don't think it's healthy. But don't you think some of those, like, working retail taught me so many things oh, yeah. about selling. And in this world, no matter what job you're in, you have to be able to sell stuff. Yes. Like, it does yes. not matter. Yes. Whether you're selling an idea, whether you're selling a product. Selling yourself, yourself as an actor or yep, actress. Actor, model, anything, yeah. podcast producer, yes. uh, music producer. Yes. Like you said, being your own manager, your own promoter. I mean, we we all are doing it. And yes. it's like, if you can put it in terms of, okay, in retail, the transaction is come into the store, give information, sell the product, take the money, have a good day. Be That's it. yeah, bye. Get out. <laughs> give me your money and get out. <laughs> Just give me your money, period. That's it. <laughs> but if you can think about that transaction in a say 20 minute span and then you can just stretch it out mm -hmm. for something bigger like selling a TV pilot or selling a track or a yes. whole album or yes getting it on the radio or whatever it is, I think that mentality can help you to get there. Because my thing before I started working retail mm -hmm. was I was, I just, the process of it made no sense to me. I didn't, I've never had a traditional job. I've never worked what? in an office. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't imagine an office job. I, yeah, I couldn't either. <sighs> I couldn't either. But it I mean working working in a sales job was the first time I've done like a traditional job. Okay. And so the amount of knowledge I learned in terms of marketing a product, you know, cuz you're behind the scenes. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Yes. Like I never operated on that kind of schedule and I think that learning from that and that's what I'm saying like if you can learn from any situation you're in mm -hmm. and really be critical about it and it's yes. like okay I don't love working in a restaurant I don't love working in no fast food. retail I don't love working here 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 that's fine but if you learn your lessons you're supposed to learn from those places you will be so thankful because you'll be prepared when yes. somebody comes your way that has the opportunities you want to grab hold of. Yes. Otherwise, they'll they'll come your way and you won't be ready and Maybe. you either won't notice they came your way. Yep. You'll be too Missed scared. Missed opportunity, yep. I've had that happen so many times to me where I just wasn't ready, didn't take an opportunity, and then I was just feeling crap about myself. Yep. Total shit. And it's like that's not fair for me to be so hard on myself. Yes. Only thing to do is start Brush learning the lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like learn what's I, in front of you. I definitely um, get lessons from everything I do, whether it be good or bad. Mm -hmm. And I look at what could I have done differently? How could I have said this differently? Or how could I approach the next situation? You'll see it a mile away the next time. But because that's oh my when God. you learn from it, you'll see it a mile away. Yeah. And that's why I know we connected because mm -hmm. we would be like critically talking about this stuff and thinking about it. And it's, I think it's really healthy yes. because it also allows us as friends and other people to be vulnerable about the things that scare us. And if we can get over the things that scare us, we're going to be invincible. Yes. So it's like, you know, talking about emotions is hard. Talking about what you did wrong is hard. Talking about, you know, things that you don't understand because we all like to be in a position of knowing stuff. Yes. It's all hard, but if you start there and you can really 
tackle that stuff, yes. you're going to be unstoppable. You know? And sometimes it's good sometimes not to know, like you said, because if everything is good and perfect, when you finally fall, you'll lose it. You'll, you won't know how to handle it. Mm-hmm. So I always look at life like um, accept your losses just as well as you accept your wins. Mm-hmm. Like take it the same way. Like, okay, I'm going to bounce right back. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to – just like when I was – I didn't – really know how to get into the acting and you gave me some places to go mm-hmm. on the first audition I did I felt like I gave it all but I didn't get it because of certain little pointers they gave me mm-hmm. but now I know oh you don't look them in the eye when you're auditioning <laughs> <laughs> when he told me that I was like oh my god but it's also good that like you did learn that and you can go back and readjust because Mm -hmm. nobody loves anything more than somebody who came back and took their advice yes like nobody you know how frustrating we're all like okay my best friend came and asked me for advice and then she went and did whatever she wanted to do yep when you come somebody comes back improved because of something you did yes and i think that's something really an interesting point you just touched on because taking that and being humble enough to take the advice mm-hmm. and go back and redo it is shows a lot of strength. Yes. I mean, it shows so much about you because it's much easier just to be like, well, fuck that guy. Yep. Whereas it's like, hold I'm on, I'm going to show shit. you I can do what you asked, but better. Yes. And that takes vulnerability and that takes work and that takes, you know, a level of, humility where you're not being egotistical and thinking you know you know everything yes because it's like good thing you did it for a guy that owns an acting studio and not like a movie producer spielberg i went home so happy though even though i didn't get it i went home happy because i just went out and did it yeah, you took a I risk. Like, I just jumped off the bridge. I was yeah. just like, I'm doing it. I don't Well, don't care. jump off a bridge. Not literally. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, no! no! I didn't get it. I'm dying. I was just like, yo, I really did it. And I didn't think And the twice first about step it. towards something like that, it really empowers you. Yes. Because up until then, it's all ideas in your head. I yep. still get this way. Oh my gosh. Fear. So you asked about um, when I go to, into auditions, mm-hmm. whether it's three people or 20 people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Auditioning is a fully separate skill set than acting in a movie. Yes. Like 100%. It's one shot. You don't have takes, so stop. No takes. There's no other actor in the room to play off of, and that's so important. When you're on set, forget about it. You can, like, have chemistry. You can – there's so much to do. There's, like, a playground. Yes. And then auditioning, you know, they're, like, just do black flips standing up, and you're, like, um, it's drawn from your own energy yeah and that's good when you have as much energy as I have and imagination and all that stuff mm-hmm. but what I will say is that usually what goes hand in hand is being that raw and vulnerable enough to get the emotion out in the character means you're very empathetic mm-hmm. means you take on other people's emotions you feel them right away yes. so I've found when I go into an audition and somebody's got that bad, rotten energy, I notice it. I then go, why? I then go, is it me? I then, you know, already before I even started the audition, it's like my mind is like, boop, 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 boop. Gotcha. And then I want to change it. I want to make that person feel better. I want to why are you? And I, but I don't have the opportunity to do that. So yeah. what I have found that I'm working on is to notice some of that stuff and realize I'm going to maybe change it through my audition. Yes. Don't try to change it. Don't try to change it. Put a boundary up. Put an invisible, clear boundary up. Yep. And then go do your thing. Like, I have to mentally create a space for myself. Like, if I could bring, like, a chalk and some salt, like a little witch I am, and draw a circle on myself, I would. But I have to do that mentally so that then I'm like, let me play in this little space right here. Because that guy over there, who's probably upset about nothing. It would have been with anybody. It's not you. Right. But it's yeah. very easy to like let oh, that yeah, stuff affect that you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, 
there goes your audition. Yep. So I definitely, it doesn't matter if there's three or 20. If somebody's got bad juju, they got bad juju. That's but you know what? That's on them. Yeah. And that, I, But I had to learn that, especially as like a very sensitive person. And I think as a woman, like that's just, and it you want to nurture. You too. Yeah. It's a really good challenge. Yeah. To win somebody over through your audition. It's like, all right, read the lines. And then they like got their newspaper up acting like they're not looking at you or something. And you're like, well, I want, am I good? Or they just testing to see how thick your skin is. Mm-hmm. So. That's true. That's true. That's really Exactly. And that's what's so good about the process. It's like, I feel like people that get it right then and there, mm-hmm. sometimes they don't know how to appreciate it because they didn't go through mm-hmm. the different the steps. steps in life to being up and down. And the What I have found in, in any type of business mm-hmm. that you need to have a specific and repeatable process. Mm-hmm. To be effective. So whether okay. you are, you know, canning fruit and putting the label on and selling it, you got to do that specifically. So it's yes. the same every time. Your you got to have it repeatable yes. so that other people can do it. You can't be doing it yourself all the time. Yes. And then it has to go. Yes. And the same is true for making a track, doing anything else. Mm-hmm. That it's like, okay, you might have 10 things that are brilliant. But if you can make those 10 brilliant things... You're going to make 20 brilliant things. You're going to make 50. So if you have a process that creates this good catalog of work, and like you said, it's out there for free, so that's scary at first, but it's garnering people's attention that you don't even know. Because out of that 500,000, 2,000, 100,000, there's somebody that knows what they're doing. They're watching. And they're watching you, and they're going... I just want to see if he's going to hang around. I want to yes. see if he has it. Yes. I want to see if he can keep churning stuff out. Yes. And then I'm going to call him up. Because if you just have one thing that's really good, that's not useful to me. If you just have, you know, and I think that's where it's good to keep inspiring others, even people that are listening, yes. to continue to put stuff out there. And eventually it will come back. Yeah. You know? Don't worry about the now all the time. Yeah. Worry about the bigger picture, like you said. And I feel like it's good that you have someone in your corner like me. I have a lot of my friends that sometimes I call when I'm down. I'm like, yo, it's just not popping off the way I expected it to. I get down there like, bro, you're good. Mm-hmm. Just keep mm-hmm. going. Like, And that's the people you it. have to keep in your corner. Yes. If people – I have to – for anyone that's listening, if you don't have people that are lifting you up when you're down, yes, they got to go. Yes. Immediately. Goodbye. Goodbye. Immediately. Because it's like to, to there's a space and time to let your best friend, your sister, your brother vent. Yes. Get it out. Yes. Yeah. We hate him. We da-da-da. We, she's a shit. Okay. We done? What's next? What's next? You're good. Everything's good. Nothing changed. Exactly. I still love you. I'm here for you no matter what. Like, if people are not saying that when you're down, they got to go. And also watch the people that are cast their fears on you as well. Mm -hmm. Like, they can't imagine them ever doing anything Mm -hmm. close to it. So they'll try to give you that. Well, honestly, in reality, it's like, who's reality? Totally. Yours? Do not ever take advice from people (laughs) who don't have the life that you're trying to live. Yes. If you are trying to take love advice from somebody who has been broken up with five times, always has drama, that's what you're going to have. Exactly. You take advice from somebody who's been married for 50 years, easy, happy as clams, Yes. you're good to go. Same goes with anything else. Yes. Don't take advice. From suckers. To close this out, what you're working on, what you want people to know that are listening. Okay. If you have any plans to do like a full album or anything coming up. Yes, I am working on an album right now. Um, I have the title. It's called This Is The Thanks I Get. And um, I honestly, I am so excited about this project. I feel like it's literally going to be like my best work. 
Um, just don't a, say your best work. Your best work is always ahead I, of you. Right, I know. I'm Up until like, now. I'm just so excited because I feel like I'm tapping mm-hmm. into a different world than I'm used to. Mm-hmm. Um, more than half of the production is done by me. And I feel like, let me not say the best. I feel like it's the start of my mm-hmm. best work. Perfect. Because, like, being 25... From like eighteen to twenty five feels like ten years. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So I'm definitely I'm speaking about friendships that haven't gone right. I'm speaking about relationships that haven't. I've had time yeah, you've to live this thing through. So now, with me putting it on music, it's like all in one. So I'm super excited about. It. I just want to do it right. I'm not rushing it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't want to just sit on the music because I plan on making more music and doing more. So I'm like in between the being patient and That's getting good, it though. right. That's good though. Staying in between stage. is good. But more than half of the actual music is finished though. That's good. Yeah, I'm just focused on visuals, mm-hmm. making sure that's right. And also building a team, too. Having people in my corner that's like, I want to do this, I want to do that. So it's really a process right now. I'm in a process, but I'm super excited for it. I know you're going to love it. I'm, I yeah. know you're you know going to love, love it. it. Yes. I'll, I know I'll, the people going to love it, too. Yeah. And your which track is Remy? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's called Ellen. <laughs> Ellen the hippie. Yeah. <laughs> My big sis and big all she sis. knows. When you put out, I have a question. When you put an album out, mm-hmm. do you just put it on Spotify? Do you put it on iTunes? Do you oh, put it on SoundCloud? Everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud. My last project isn't on SoundCloud because I wanted to actually get paid for the music. How does so. that work? I put paid. it. I put it through um, TuneCore, mm-hmm. and it's sent. You can sell it to different stores, so you can find it on Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Play, anything. Nice. Like, there's like at and then least you just get forty to fifty stores. They sell it through, and then you get and then you get compensated. Yeah, people listening to it. Exactly. Oh, so if you have Apple Music, you could look my music up. It'll be easier. And you're just MVP. A- MVP since '94. Okay, yeah. nice. On all social media. And on Google Play and Amazon. On and all Google that? Play, it's MVP, but eventually I'm going to change it to MVP since 94 because there's a million kinda, people oh, with calling MVP. themselves probably. You uh, don't want it to get mixed in the big. Totally. That's what list I was going to ask. Of, I was like, you were able to land MVP, that's what I'm but saying, yeah. there's more than just, more than just one. MVP since 94. Yeah. Just so it could all be, you know, together instead of like choppy. Yeah. Oh, he's MVP since ninety four on Instagram, but he's MVP on you know, you don't want I to totally get, get that distract yeah. people. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I'm MVP since ninety four on yeah, social media. Yes. And MVP on Google Play, on Amazon, on Spotify. Yes. Yes. Spotify, Amazon, Google Play. Everything. Yes.